Hello, my most favorite artists. Today we are going to create a heart work based on the work of public artist Chris Uphuse. The first step is to create hearts. An easy way to make hearts is to make a wide and short letter M. From that, create two diagonal lines that come to a point at the bottom. We want to make these hearts big enough to fill our paper. You can even have some that overlap, just like Chris Uphuse. That means it looks like one heart is behind another. You're going to want to make six hearts in total. Right here, I'm going to show you how to make a heart that overlaps. So again, I start drawing my heart like normal, and it hasn't bumped into any other hearts yet, so you don't have to worry about it. But you notice here, right at the tip, it's gonna go like it's hiding behind that other heart. So just that first heart looks like it's right on top of that one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some silly faces. Now I found some of these eyes and mouths that look like they belong on Chris Uphue's artwork, but you can come up with your own sets of eyes and mouths that are individual to you. Now we're going to trace over all those pencil lines with a sharpie or a permanent marker. If you don't have a sharpie available, you can use a black crayon that will also work well. But make sure that it's not the kind that is a washable crayon that will not work well. So you want just a regular old black crayon or a sharpie to do over these lines. If you don't have either one, it is okay to skip this step. Now that I've traced over everything with my permanent mocha, I am going to erase any unwanted lines. Do not want those showing up in my painting. This next step is completely optional, but I added a rainbow to my background just because I noticed that Chris Uphuse has rainbows and sometimes bees and fun stuff in his background. So I added a rainbow. You do not need to. You can just keep it the hearts if you would like. Thank you. 
the next step we're going to do after this is, is get out our watercolor paints. If you do not have watercolors at home, it is okay. I'm going to show you a trick on how to use markers like paint. However, with watercolor paint, let's talk about our watercolor basics. First, this brush is not a toothbrush or a toilet brush. We are not going to scrub this brush. She is fragile like a grandma and does not want her hair messed with. When using watercolor paints, we're going to use the following process. We are going to dip our brush in the water. We are going to swish it around. We're going to tap it on the side and then gently tickle our paints. You wanna make sure that there is a puddle of water underneath your brush at all times. If your paints feel sticky like honey, you may want to add more water because you have too much paint and not enough water. If you want your color to be lighter, you are going to want to add more water to your color to make it look lighter. Notice that I have my hand on the handle, not on that silver part. That is going to keep the paint away from my fingers and on to my paper. Okay, so here is the secret. I do have a trick if you do not have watercolor paints. This is a marker and the marker has a tip as well as a broad side. And I'm not going to use the tip, no, I'm going to use the side of my marker, which is going to make a nice thick line. And you're gonna notice I'm doing the rainbow right now, but you, uh, if you're doing on your hearts, you wanna do the outside edge of your hearts so we can make it into a paint so you see I'm gonna add red I'm gonna add the other colors to my rainbow and I'm not putting them right up next to each other I am leaving a little bit of space if you are doing this inside your hearts make sure that you choose one color for each heart you don't want to be doing multiple colors but on the rainbow it's okay Okay, and here is where the magic happens. I am going to take that brush that you see up there, I am going to dip it in the water, and then I am going to add it on top of my marker strokes. You're going to see that what happens is when the water touches that marker, that it starts bleeding and making a paint. Now you notice that before we used a permanent marker, and when you go over that permanent marker with water, it does not move because it's permanent. So the washable markers, yeah, they'll bleed and they'll make a little paint for us, which looks really cool, but permanent markers will not work because they are permanent, they are not going to move. Once you are done with your artwork, please put it somewhere safe to dry. Take a picture and upload it under your assignment on Edsby. I miss you and love you dearly. Goodbye.